Josh Heupel and Tennessee, depending on who you ask, has a very daunting schedule or a very favorable schedule. Caleb and I both thought, considering the player, the teams they had to play, that it was favorable. Uh, you have a trip to Oklahoma, and then you have a lot of the regulars. But uh, a lot of people said that they thought that was an incredibly tough schedule. No matter the case, I don't want to get caught up in that. But as far as coaches, comparing the coaches, where would Tennessee rank? So let me uh, start with the obvious one. You have to give Kirby Smart the advantage, right? Can we? I know there are a lot of ten, diehard Tennessee fans that probably hate Kirby Smart, but you have to give him the advantage, right? Let me ask you just this question, though. If you uh, had equal talent, if you had equal talent, who do you think would be better at game planning? I'm going to plead ignorance because I haven't seen it yet, and I wasn't wowed with what Josh Heupel did or didn't do in terms of adjustments against Missouri last year. So if you took that one game out, I could make a much stronger argument. I thought that was a red flag. He'll probably learn from that, and that's great. But I would take Kirby. Who would you take? I, I'll, I'll go based on what we know, Kirby, but I don't think it's as obvious. Like Nick Saban, it was more obvious because you have – taught me about how just great of a game planner Nick Saban was and just how incredible he, how involved he was in the game planning. I'm not so sure Kirby's not just a defensive coordinator and lets the offense do its thing at Georgia. Now this column ran, when did this run? Did this run Monday? Uh, I believe so. Or Sunday. Yeah. Did it run Sunday? Or Sunday. So things have changed with Kalen DeBoer, but I will tell you this with Brent Benables, who did go 10 and three last season, but six and seven in 2022, I would give the advantage to Heupel on that. Uh, one could argue Kentucky's Mark Stoops gets a nod over Heupel because what he has done long term, and I like what he's done at Kentucky. I got a lot of respect for it, but I would still go Heupel. Uh, Billy Napier, obviously uh, Heupel. Arkansas head coach Sam Pittman's on the hot seat, so that has to be uh, Heupel. Um, and then um, – I do think you have to factor into, if you're ranking these coaches, the success that Heupel had at Central Florida. So it's not as if it's just what Tennessee did, what Tennessee's done under Heupel and what Stoops has done at Kentucky. It's not apples and oranges. So you have to factor that in as well. Now, when I wrote this column, I had advantage DeBoer because, at Alabama because he had um, made the college football playoff. I mean, to me, that's more significant than anything Heupel has done. So it's a it's a little bit of a combination of projecting forward and a combination of what they have done. If I went and rewrote this column, considering what has happened, I believe that the lack of loyalty among his staff, that makes me believe that he hit lightning in a bottle with a very good quarterback at Washington. And I don't know that he can ever... Uh, recreate that so i had advantage currently in parentheses to boar but boy i don't feel nearly as good about it as when i wrote this column on sunday so i compared to season last year to hypel's 2022 season and i'm trying to think you know if hypel were coaching in the pac-12 could he have gone undefeated too with that 2022 team and i'm halfway there but then i'm like but the south carolina game happened and to DeBoer's credit there was no south carolina game that happened in the pac-12 that happened last year and so that's the only thing that still on resume makes me lean to bore. But guys, I'm trying, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm working on a, another history video on a Kalen DeBoer background. That's going to come up. And I'll just tell you up front. It's really hard to identify something that's unique about his spread offense. That's that, that puts him just ahead of the curve. I, I'm with you. I think he just is a, I think as a standard coach who wins a standard spread offense who found the right quarterback that got him above the hump at Washington. And I think we're going to see that very quickly. So gun to my head, I think I got Josh Heupel. Resume, I'll give DeBoer the advantage because of the resume, but I'd rather have Josh Heupel coaching than DeBoer. Well, I agree um, with that. If if you ask me to pick who I wanted to be my, my coach for the next 10 years, it's Heupel, and it's really not even close. Um, because we've talked about on this very show the fact that please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't yet. Greatly appreciate it. We've talked about on the show how Hypel 
seems to have success regardless of his who his assistants are. I mean, if you look at Jerry Mack and you look at uh, Brian Jean Marie, it feels like if Tennessee loses both those guys, and it looks like that might be the case with Jean Marie going to Michigan and Mack already going to the Jacksonville Jaguars, doesn't it feel like Caleb that uh, Josh Heupel is going to be okay? DeBoer just lost his offensive coordinator. Um, I, 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 I don't think he's going to be just okay. So if you're asking me, this is not an all-star staff like um, like Lane Kiffin had to put together. If you're asking me the head coach, I, I'm going with Heupel, and then who can you bring along? I trust him to bring along good coaches. And I think for the most part, he's done that. I, I really believe that when you look at the coaching changes that are happening, this is an opportunity for an upgrade at a couple of different positions in terms of a recruiter or uh, a position coach. I don't think Tennessee's lost a lot. I think what's, what's scary about Tennessee and the, the coaching turnover that they could un- undergo, which let's say is one, could be two. Did you want to make a change with Willie Martinez? Did you want to make it? Because if you did, that would be three coaches. The optics of that would be bad, number one. Number two, that's a major upheaval in recruiting to lose three guys and all those contacts. It will cost you guys. I don't know which ones. We'll never know which ones, but it will cost you prospects. So I I, I think it's – but I think Hop will re- replace them with good guys, so I'm taking Hop. Yeah, I agree. Now, I got a question. Now, okay, you can laugh, but does DeBoer's NAIA success – reflect on him at all i mean he did i know it's in naia like which is below division three but at sweet falls he won three naia championships in four years national championships does that count for anything i mean it counts for something it count it it counts just like it did with bruce pearl you know bruce pearl yeah i mean he he had he had success there and travis brings this up and that's what I, I really like about Josh Heupel is that this is not a soft offense. It might be an up-tempo offense, but it's not soft like Butch Jones ran. Travis says Washington was so soft in the natty, he better do something different. That's a great point. I mean, just philosophically, let's be honest with you. I mean, I, I like what Josh Heupel is doing a lot better than what, what DeBoer has done. Yeah, and we talked about this on uh, yesterday, and I, you know, it's, it's it's actually pertinent to kind of bring up again, because this was the problem with the fourteen playoff the entire time, was that a fourteen playoff. Now, I guess you could say it was worse with the BCS, but typically, when it comes to two teams, you're going to get the two best teams or two of the three. With a playoff like that, fourth team backs in through an easy schedule and then gets lucky and backs into the national title game and gets wrecked and blown out and doesn't belong. And you saw that. So many, I mean, you saw it. Remember when Oregon did it with Mariota and Mark Helfrich coaching them, Dave, in 2014? Right. They didn't, they didn't belong in the title game. And we saw TCU do it. We saw Washington do it. And what you realize is that's not reflective of how great of a job the coaches were doing. It was more like you just talked about lightning in a bottle with the right quarterback. And they kind of backed their way in. That's why I said, I didn't think Texas was that good this past year. I think Steve Sarkeesian was overrated too because of that. Other than the soft part, did Washington just go undergo a Mike Vick? A very special player got them to a higher level than they would have. Without. That is a great comparison because what happened to Virginia Tech when they actually played for the national title against Florida State? Remember that game? They, they were an overall lesser team. They got wrecked, yeah. Right. And they didn't belong in the same field. Michael Vick willed them to that national title game, and they didn't. They were not one of the two best teams in the country that year. Didn't he sort of kind of keep them in it for the first half for a little bit, like with a couple of pretty phenomenal runs? But yeah, I I think that. But uh, we knew that we knew that Florida State was going to absolutely obliterate them, though. Yeah. In the end, Phoenix, 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 Phoenix. Um, I (laughs) I think that he is that type of special player. And in some ways, a different special player than Vic, because I think I don't want to just compare the two guys as running quarterbacks. Vic was an elite runner. Penix is a good runner, and Penix had a better arm as far as accuracy. That one, not a stronger arm, but I think is a better thrower 
than Vic. Would be Significantly point. better thrower. Probably studies playbooks too, which is, you know, Michael Vick didn't do at all when he played um, uh, at Atlanta. So, I mean, look, yes, overall, I would take Josh Heupel. Now going down this other list, I mean, you know, Dave, I will give you this. John Adams has enlightened me to Mark Stoops. I give him credit for the job he's done, but he's really taken advantage of a bad SEC East over the years and scheduling really soft out of conference. And um, at some point, may I ask you this? What do we do? We question Mark Stoops's um, competitiveness that he doesn't want another job because you're never going to win a national championship there at Kentucky. You know, it's funny you say that because I remember people thought that it was weird that Brian Kelly bolted for LSU. And I kind of respected it because it was like Brian Kelly was like, I want to go get a national championship. And he, you know, it was kind of like that gutsy move to say, I'll take the expectations. Mark Stoops, I think that's possible. I, but again, <laughs> Dave, the thing with Mark Stoops, you're right. The pressure's not there. You talk about work-life balance with coaching. You don't really have to work as hard at Kentucky because you're not going to win those recruiting battles anyway. So you just got to, you know, find a hodgepodge of guys that can maybe fit in. And then maybe he just likes it. Maybe he's got a comfortable post that he doesn't want to really throw away and not throw that away. Um, so, so give me, give me one other coach, not named Kirby Smart or Kalen DeBoer that you is on Tennessee schedule that you would make an argument is a better coach than Josh Heupel. I would think after coming off a 10-win season, it has to be Venables, or would no. you go Stoops? No, I wouldn't go any of those guys. Um, definitely not Venables. Guys, the Big 12 was bad this year. If Texas plays Alabama in any month other than September, they're losing that game by 40. And that was such a that was such a fluke win. Um, and it really ruined the whole landscape of college football last year because Texas was not a top four team. But no, the one coach I will say watch out for. I think Mississippi State made a very underrated hire in Jeff Levy. I mean, that guy, I he that. is a he's a he actually was Heupel's offensive coordinator at UCF in 2018 when they went undefeated. And he was also Lane Kiffin's offensive coordinator when Ole Miss went to a New Year's Six Bowl. Jeff Levy knows ball. And I think you're going to see a very entertaining that was a that was Mississippi State finally deciding let's do a another Mike Leach hire, which is find an offensive coach ahead of the curve, which is what they needed to do.